Welcome to the lecture on Chapter 22, Section 2, Hardship and Suffering During the Depression. The objective for today's lesson is to learn about the living conditions during the Great Depression, and the essential question we'll be asking ourselves is how did the people cope with the hard times? So the, we'll begin with talking about the effect of the Great Depression in urban areas, in the cities. Now, the causes of the Great Depression we talked about last unit. Um, but, or I'm sorry, the causes of the stock market crash we talked about last unit. This triggered, among other things, what would become the Great Depression, lasting from 1929 to 1941. And debt, unemployment, and inflation are major causes of the Great Depression following the stock market crash. In many situations, people lose their homes and lose their apartments. We talked last lecture about how unemployment in some areas reached as high as 25%. Men who were professionals, oftentimes very educated, and had great uh, self-respecting and well-respected jobs, um, lost their jobs, lost everything. And with that, there will be psychological effects that come that we'll talk about later in the unit. But what ends up happening is you have millions of Americans being evicted from their homes, banks taking over their homes or their apartments, and then being evicted from their homes, and they have to set up, set up uh, shanty towns, which are basically like makeshift shelters that they have to put out in public areas because they've been evicted from their homes. These cropped up all over cities, all over the country. And as President Hoover struggles to deal with the Depression, which is something we'll talk about in 22.3, uh, they'll get the nickname Hooverville. People sort of blaming President Hoover for him not being able to fix this situation. You also have men and women and children uh, lining up in bread lines, which are basically uh, places where private charities would give out bread. And uh, so they line up for bread, they go to soup kitchens to get food. And one of the biggest struggles for the homeless during the Great Depression, figuring out a way to feed their family. Food is essential, of course, to life, and something we often take for granted. But when you're this down on your luck, and you're this poor, finding your next meal becomes your first, and really at times only, priority. Minorities suffer more than whites, though. You have race riots across the country. You have deportations in the Southwest. Uh, both Mexicans and Mexican-Americans are deported in the Southwest, and you have 50% on average unemployment between African-Americans and Mexican-Americans compared to just 25% for white Americans. You have many white Americans who are unemployed, who become very resentful towards African-Americans who are employed or employers who hire African-Americans, and you have rising racial tensions in American cities. You have the same thing for Mexicans and Mexican-Americans in the Southwest. People becoming very resentful towards these Mexicans and Mexican-Americans and the employers who then hire them. So there are lingering social effects of the Great Depression. And there's also an effect on women. Um, many people become frustrated with married women who get a job. It's believed that if you're a woman and you're married, your husband should be working. Not you. And if your husband is working, you should not be taking a job from another man who has a family to feed and to support. So many people also became frustrated with women who began to work during this time. Now, the Depression didn't just hit urban areas. It also hit rural areas. And in some rural areas, it hit them even harder. Uh, so the causes of the Depression in the rural areas, you have the falling crop prices and rising rural debt. We talked about the lingering effects of World War I and how many farms expanded their land and expanded their production. Well, that drops precipitously following World War I, and many of these farmers are left with debt that they can't pay off and crops that they can't sell. This, of course, becomes even worse when 25% of the population is unemployed and can't actually afford the food. Not only do you have falling crop prices and rising rural debt, but you also have the Dust Bowl of the late 1920s with extremely high winds and a terrible drought uh, hitting th this area right here, Kansas, Colorado, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Texas. Parts of these five states um, right here in this region, the Dust Bowl is considered like Texas to the Dakota, basically. The, this whole region is technically the Dust Bowl. And it hits really, really bad. Many of these people moving west on Route 60 
six through Arizona to California looking for jobs. They were nicknamed Okies. Uh, it originally came from all those in Oklahoma moving west, and that was just generally applied um, to everyone who moved west during this time. The effects of this, the effects of the Great Depression in the rural areas, 400,000 farms were foreclosed between 1929 and 1932. That's just the first three years of this 11- to 12-year um, period in American history. Most of these farmers lose their farms. They can't pay off their mortgages, so their farms are repossessed. If they stay, they have to become tenant farmers or sharecroppers, not really able to control their own destiny um, or to work for themselves. And this has, a, this has a huge impact on the United States of America, with much of the population moving, um, and you can see the effects of the Great Depression not only in urban areas, but also in rural areas. Now, other problems and effects of the Great Depression. There was very little direct relief or government help during this time. New York City uh, would actually have private charities that would give out money to families, uh, $2, uh, 39 cents, or something like that a week which actually was the highest in the country, but not even close to enough to feed a family. So there's no real government help here. Schools are closing or closing early because they can't pay their employees. So children are losing out on education. And you have increased child labor because children are so much cheaper to hire. So businesses are looking towards children's labor. And the men are still struggling to find jobs. These men who are struggling to find jobs, after a while, after a year or two years or three years, become totally discouraged with the fact that they can't work and they can't provide for their family, feeling embarrassed by this. Uh, they, uh, many of them, two million of them, begin to, quote, ride the rails and basically just jump on trains and go from town to town looking for a job. They become incredibly embarrassed by the fact, like I said, they can't afford, uh, provide for their families. And some of them actually abandon their family altogether because they just can't deal with the shame of it all. Not only do some ride the rails, but the suicide rate increases by 30% for the same reason. Families that do survive often come together and survive. Uh, different families who are able to have jobs and afford things during this time are extremely generous to those that can't. And there's a new sense of community in the United States during this time. Additionally, more long-term effects of this is many people who lived through the Depression learn how to save their money and become extremely frugal with their money, noting how horrible their life was during the Depression. They live on the idea that they never want to go through that again. So you see, um, you know, I mean, for the most part, they've died out now. But just 20, 30, 40 years ago, you see the generation that lived through the Depression. And even so far removed from the Depression, in their older age, they were still very frugal with their money. Um, and that is something they learned when they were younger through the Depression. And then, of course, most surprisingly, you have malnutrition and starvation widespread during this time period. Next lecture, we're going to get into Hoover's response to the Depression. I was incorrect last lecture. It's actually 22 3. So we'll talk about how did President Hoover respond to all of these problems. Was it good? Was it bad? And what effect did that have on American society? If you have any questions, please, like always, feel free to ask a history.